Right, hello, hello and welcome. Welcome once again to another edition of AMB Animation Livestream. Right, so what are we doing today? Right, so what I'm going to be doing is I've got a bit of downtime on my feature film that I'm working on. So I figured I'm going to cap up my uh, Real Animator Training Intermediate Archive. I've just started doing these keys of this uh, bird run with a flashy sort of fancy tail with lots of patterns. It's going to be about the science of shape, shape simplification and all that. So we're going to be doing that. I've still got a fair bit to do on this, so but we're not going to be doing that today because I'm going to be working on this um today as i've got some free time but um as i haven't streamed for a while i thought you know what i'm gonna be in a pretty giving mood so what does that mean that means uh if we look at um amb animation has been just going from strength to strength and i'm feeling good about it um while i've been working on this movie i've been getting lots of new members as well so that's really good so um it, why not why not just give a little back so if we go into the real animator training library um this tier i've got other tiers so in this tier i've got 147 members now and 247 videos and we've restructured the albums a bit but you know so now you have the old live stream library so pre-real animator training and then you've got your course archives and then you've got your real animator training lectures and the ask the animator streams so what i'm going to do for you guys is i'm going to give you one of these streams one of these lectures absolutely free on youtube so all you non-members can enjoy and i'm going to give you some of the juicy stuff some of the stuff because i know you youtubers like to have things that are flashy and fun and all that sort of stuff rather than bouncing balls and flower sacks and things that you really should be learning in the first place but let's 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 roll with it let's give you something you're going to enjoy uh hopefully enjoy um uh, those of you with patience um uh, okay so in the advanced animation archive i had this 10 part course which believe it or not after 10 parts so that's more than 10 hours is still unfinished maybe now i've done the intermediate archive i can come back and complete this thing but uh we had this started this you know early on when I started building the library, doing this course on dynamic perspective, which was 10 parts. So I thought, you know what, why don't we just give you the one in the middle for free, part five, you know, do a bit of math, you know, animators, they love halves, you know, you can give you thirds as well, but I think if you, 10, 10 is better halved, right? So five, let's just give you this lecture on dynamic perspective, absolutely free for people on YouTube to enjoy. Um, so yeah without further ado all i have to do is go over to my other mouse pad and i i did try to do this earlier and there was no sound so i'm going to keep an eye on the comments and uh let me know if you guys get sound so um i believe i was talking well into my mic there so okay enjoy the lecture people i'm going to go and clean up some cat vomit naughty cat right let's hit play for you guys enjoy hello hello and welcome welcome once again to another edition of amb animation live stream right so we have been um burning through this uh advanced animation lecture for the uh real animator training library um we started it yesterday uh we have now taken it to the stage where we are satisfied with the roughs. Uh, we did initial blocking uh, with straight ahead. We then went and uh, the character was surprisingly solid for straight ahead. Um, so we did little adjustments to him on pose to pose. Uh, sometimes that is very, very necessary and very required. Most of those adjustments were made here and um, on uh, on some of these ones um, we then uh, had another rough pass at the buildings uh, the environment which uh, the character was then going to go and uh, move around in uh, so although it is still very loose we now have an idea of the geography um, of where he is headed to 
um, and what these things look like so it is a little bit more solid than before um, now we will go back and start uh, bringing this thing uh, tightening it up and making it uh, work on a level above just a nice flowing piece of rough animation so i am going to be doing the character first i am going to be um, discarding the background for a little while and we are going to put a model on this character we are going to um, solidify it even more uh, we have done the hard work with him in working out his proportions and his construction going to uh, simplify it with the animation and put the shapes and bring him onto model. I'm going to be using one of my characters that I designed many years ago and I still have plans for him. Some of you may have seen an animation that I did of him. Uh, let's show you the animation I did of him in my early 20s. Um, so I will just, this will be a bit of fun for you. Um, so in my early 20s, let's open in a new tab. I think, I believe I must have been about 20, 22 when I did this. So let's go to, so this is almost 20 years ago. We're talking about 20, uh, 18 years ago I did this. So I'm going to be, you know, I've still got plans for this character. It's still something that I'm going to want to do. Some of you have seen it before. Uh, I'm just going to find it on my videos. Bear with me. It'll give you an idea of what the character is. Um, many years ago I had an idea to do an animated series. And I still will be putting this out there. But the rabbit first. The rabbit first. Um, so on YouTube I have this thing that I did uh, so uh, we see him here anyway there so um so there we go that is uh the character that uh, i am going to be revisiting um some of you if you look at my lecture videos where i'm talking to the screen uh when i'm talking to you you look in the background you see a photograph of a rabbit you see another photo you see him there so I'm dealing with a character whose model I know. The reason I'm sharing this with you is that you understand um, if you're going to be doing animation like this and you're going to be doing this sort of work, you need to have a construction and a model already worked out. Now, I am going to be using one of my own characters that I designed in my teens and you know, that's you saw some of my animation when I finished college. Um, I had already worked with my mentor when I did that. So uh, it is of a higher standard, uh, but I'm a lot better than that now. Um, so anyway, so uh, let's just go and say before we begin uh, the lecture and start putting the character on. That's the little intro. Let's just say hello to a few people online. Dun, 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 dun. Da, 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 da. Smashing Steps, Animator Ed, Sean, Pablo, Mind to Blend, Life Fantasy, Ryu Arch, um, Ryan, Patch Dooms, Alan, the moderator. Everybody behave themselves. He's there with his spanner. He's there with his spanner. Um, Mage. Um, Gina, good to see you. Sorry to see you're getting some hate, but you're dealing it with the, in, the, in the right way. I like that tweet you put on there. Um, wish on a star. Um, there we go. Animation by made in his early 20s. There we go. Hi, Thomas Roberts. 
Lulu Bell. Is Lulu Bell online? Hello, Lulu Bell. Um, aloha. I love that word, aloha. It reminds me of the old Laurel and Hardy, where they, where they came back to their wives. They were cheating. Not cheating on their wives, but they were having a holiday when they said they'd be somewhere else. Honolulu, baby. And they said, aloha. And their wives got the guns out and started shooting them. Always reminds me of that. I love Laurel and Hardy. What's all this then? Flashy action animation by AMB. Ah, Martin Elden is online. Everybody say hello to Martin Elden. He is a, a genius in disguise. Um, there we go. The ban hammer. Uh, uh, Sean. Um, there we go. Haters. Alan the man with the spanner. I have to finish watching Fist of Fume. <laughs> I leave it half also. I remember watching the cartoon. Yeah, there we go. Yeah. <laughs> there we go. Uh, the Bruce Lee reference has come out. And so they should. Because that character was loosely based on the legend, the man, the myth. Right. So what am I going to do here is I am going to uh, eliminate the background uh, for the time being. And we are going to come back to that later. Uh, we are focusing purely on character here, so let us um, just go through all of this uh, and, you know, talk amongst yourselves, as Rutger Hauer used to say in the old UK Guinness ads, while I go through the process of um, doing the extremely creative task of if this was a, a an, an animate an, an animation tutorial by somebody who didn't actually know how to animate what i'd be saying is is what you do is you hover over here and you click the mouse here uh, or pen and the, this represents the background clear these eyes this blue means it's selected so some of you who crave for software tutorials um i'm giving you a little bit of that so that's going to help you understand how to do the animation <laughs> that that I'm doing at the moment. Of course, I am joking with a sincere voice. Right. So there we are. We can now just focus on our dude. Right. And what I am going to do is I am going to... We made him yellow to make him black. Uh, yellow and black, game of death. Okay. But I am going to make him yellow again. Um, because I want to... Um, but I'll do that frame by frame so we can save time from all this boredom. And um, I'm going to create bitmap layers on top. Um, go away. Right, I'm going to create bitmap layers on top. So, new bitmap layer and we are going to draw in red. Because red looks good and it comes out on the stream. So, right, so I am going to think about the streamlining these shapes when I'm putting my character on top. How is that coming out? Is that coming out on stream? Yes, you're able to see that. So I'm going to think about streamlining these shapes and obviously I know the kind of trousers he's wearing. So I'm going to put some wrinkles here. That's where his belt is going to be. This is his middle line, his center line here. Um, the hair is where there's going to be a crease in his trouser. Now Obviously, all this kind of stuff I'm doing here, you need to have done life drawing and anatomy drawing to be able to do these kind of uh, tricks and these kind of drawings well. Um, if we are uh, going to do this sort of stuff um, to a standard. So there's no point in me trying to tell you all these little drawing tricks like I'm going to put a little ring around the back of his thing there and I'm going to then put another sort of cup shape on hair like this to represent uh, the trouser you know the the way the trouser is uh, creasing and folding around his shoe okay but that is something that is very important this this character is it's all based on anatomy and simplifying shapes and line drawing um, so here, um, before I go on and draw his, um, he has got a sleeve to a jacket. So I'm just going to make something like this and do something like that. 
and put a band around his wrist. Here is where we're going to very much rely on shapes. These are moving. Um, this is where his, if you remember the whole scapular belt, this is where his upper section is going to be. His chest is going to be here like this. And this is going to be like that. Now that's not how his sleeves are really going to look. You're going to see I'm going to layer on top in a minute. Now this is a really cool trick. We just make a sort of cube here. We go one, two, three like that. And we put something in there like that and put a thumb on top. Um, and when cleaning that up, we can get even more fiddly uh, and make those just round off some of these harsh shapes and make them more illustrative. But when we're animating and keeping things solid, this is why we need to work in this level now. Now the head, as I've said, is based on uh, human construction. So we've got this, I'm going to divide this, this whole front section is where his eye is going to be. And we're just going to come off there like that for his mandible. And his nose is going to come out here like this. So we're going to have the mouth there like that, the eye in there. If you know and understand your character's construction, as I said, this is advanced animation in real animator training. Um, I have to go at a fair pace for this. If you're in real animator training and you're watching the character construction videos, uh, for example, where I give you a full, actually there's two hours worth. Uh, I take Don Bluth scale from Titan AE. My style of character design, particularly for this character is very heavily Bluth, Titan AE inspired. Um, it is, you know, those videos will help you understand what I'm doing here. Now we're going to put on, he's actually got collars and he's wearing a jacket. So we're going to put that, those collars on there like that. And he's got a big kind of like sleeve, rolled up sleeves. Okay. So there's going to be some sort of, uh, you know, creases and folds on his sleeves there. Um, and also his jacket. We're not going to be worrying too much about the overlapping action of his jacket at the moment, but I'm just going to put something there to just help me uh, understand that. He's got these side pieces, these side things running down with the sort of Game of Death, Bruce Lee Game of Death uh, reference there. Very subtle. It's not, you know, his colors are not going to be yellow or anything like that. Um, he's got his... Um, side pieces to his jacket hair as well like that so that is the that is the model of the character that we are going to be starting to place on top um and i'm working in bitmap because oops that's one of the problems when you're dealing with sb pro is it tends to when you flip and roll you haven't got the and bitmap layer added it tends to go to the wrong layer right so the reason I'm choosing bitmap is, is we're starting to draw a bit now. Okay, so uh, we blocked out in vector. I love to block out in vector, but we're now starting to draw in bitmap. So let's go and do this on this side. Um, so here I want to I want to think about this shape. We want to think about this area here. So this is what it all is. People talk about style. You've seen that I've drawn him in a very constructed but anatomical style but my personal preference of style is and the way I like to draw is with these graphic simplified shapes because I prefer it you, you can see I can take this and I've demonstrated to you many times I can draw it in any style that I want okay once you know anatomy and once you understand how to do this but I like to see these kind of lines defining the back like this I'm just going to get another, uh, I'm just going to go in with my vector here so you can see. So this shape, okay, I like to see that clearly defined in my animation drawings. I like that kind of stuff. That's that's the kind of stuff that, that really interests me. Um, so now we're going to just curl that side and put a little mark in there. 
that creates and then we'll put there see how we create the illusion of complexity just shapes um, it's, it's all shapes uh, that's all I can say about it so this this trouser leg I'm gonna put a shape on the end of it there like that just to create the little fold around the shoe there like that okay and then I'm gonna put a little crease there to indicate that the trouser is folding and creasing over there but so you see how now we're bringing solidity and form um, onto our rough drawing um, so this is almost like a I'm actually quite um, this rough pass because action tends to come quite easy to me um, as I said it's not the world's hardest thing to animate um, but um, this rough pass has been quite fortunate in the straight ahead it's like I think I can pretty much straight ahead these these things and a lot of them will survive as keys I was looking at it and assessing it um, beforehand so now here what do we got here I'm gonna put a little triangle here like that I'm gonna change the diagonal of that and I'm gonna put a few lines in there like that we got a fist okay just like that just like that it's a Don blue thing okay uh, we're gonna do something like this sometimes my buttons on my Wacom do not let me flip back notice there is no light box there is no uh, onion skin I want to watch these shapes I want to watch I'm concentrating very much on the drawing now so this is coming around here like this I'm focusing on that I'm not putting in the jacket the jacket uh, follow-through will have to be done afterwards I'm just putting that in drawing in the back of his jacket as a placeholder okay so now I'm going to do this we'll see the top of that there like that Let's put that there like that see get that effect there like that now if I didn't know anatomy here and this angle of the head I'd be pretty much screwed okay so I know that he's got a sternocleidomastoid that comes here like this and he's got this here and that comes to the underside so this goes back to what we did that standard walk cycle okay when we were fiddling with the angle of the head okay now I don't need to so much draw in the construction of his head because um, I've shown you and I've talked you through and there are other videos in real animator training that cover that okay I know that this probably going to be more like this and we've got this chunk of hair that comes here okay, that gives us some structure keeps this thing the back of the head now we've got the colors of his jacket like this and the over section here and this thing will be coming we want to think maybe something so I'm not paying too much attention to this uh, follow through but I'm putting a little bit of thought into it okay a little bit of thought right. so there we go so that's two of them down then we're going to continue with this uh, so I'm going to select this and make this yellow we are going to add a new bitmap layer and we are going to continue drawing in on this while you guys probably either draw either watch what I'm doing and enjoy the um, the shapes or chat amongst yourselves so here now we're moving into a a third dimension we're creating the illusion of dimension what we want to watch here is is his trapezius and his back okay and we want to you see my line here could probably be benefit more like that more like that okay we want to really bring these shapes out well probably this will end here like this more this way let's put a now we put some like rings around these areas here okay and this crease will be at the back here like this 
then we put like a little thing there like that that really helps define that similarly here some rings some folds here like that the side of his pocket will be here this thing will be on the side of his leg now like that um, now we'll be seeing the back of his shoe so we'll be seeing a shape somewhat like this and we just want to curl that off there and again we want to think about this cupping shape uh, that's going to create a nice little buckle on his um, on the garment of his trouser leg this we want his foot to be really registering that it's on the ground so I'm gonna curve it heavy like that it's gonna look nice I'm gonna feel the weight weighted line you know things like that really help so this is now gonna be the let's just rub some of this down a bit so we get some more trouser detail in there this is going to be his belt section this is going to be like this and we're going to buckle that upper section there like that so you see you you really have to know your character's model but and it, it is big it is quite routine for me to put my character design on top uh, one two three okay we can put a diamond there like that to really emphasize those knuckles and just do that um, because what this enables me to do is just very easily and very routinely uh, put my character on top of the anatomy to the point that it is very very simple um, and if you're studying a uh, real animator training anatomy um, hopefully this will illustrate to you like if some of you are watching this thinking this is that's so easy but I can't do it like that he makes it look easy you can do it like this and you will do it like this if you only taken the time out to become a proficient at anatomy now let's put some structure to the back of his head this is the occipital section of his skull okay um, this is the temporal section at the side the ear is going to be the rear of the ear is going to be a shape like this that's where his neck is okay and his uh, trapezius is this is his jaw this is his zygomatic cheekbone right now we're just gonna put this hair like this we're just gonna have some hair design on top like that and work that out like that so there we have let's just quickly put a little bit of a scrub along and look at this thing changing in solidity there we go you see how we're just this construction is really helping us put the sky on top of it okay and it's starting to be solid but it is all about shapes um, I can't stress that enough to you so I might only I might depending on how long it takes um, new bitmap layer I might just do a portion of it so you get an idea so let's have a look we'll see maybe I'll get it maybe maybe I'll do a portion of this section so you get an idea okay I'll see how this goes because I know some of you are gonna want to watch this section you're gonna want to watch the front of the character going into a role how do we do that okay so depending on what what the time of the stream and how long it's going on for and whether the audience is getting bored or not of this and that this is a very important lecture but I don't want it to become a drawing demo I want you to understand how things are working okay so I don't want minds to wander when we're doing this lecture so I'll maybe take it to this point of the run okay so we we see how to have that camera turn around it okay there's nothing difficult here then I might uh, change it I might just come come into this point okay I might show you how to do this okay that's that's uh, that's easy that won't take long and then we'll come in and 
and maybe tackle this because this is the angle one this is the one where people might think that's challenging when it isn't really it's all worked out but anyway so let's just get to the let's just get to this step up to up to this drawing here i like this one let's so let's do one two three four and then we'll we'll go to another section and then the rest of it i can do off stream um right so let's again continue with these uh shapes so again i want to the thing that is all been it's all been done for me but the torso is all this shape now i'm going to streamline the back i'm going to streamline the back and have it this way um, we're going to have the trousers this way and we're going to have a little buckle here this can represent the pocket of his trousers on the side and these directional lines of these rings are very important okay because they really they really also they give the they give your uh material a certain toughness so we can we can feel the sort of maybe the texture of that garment okay um so it's not you know it's obviously not loose fitting pants he's wearing um so this one again so I'm going to have this coming over the shoe. So I'm going to maybe put this like this here. That's good. Let's get that shoe. How do we do that? We just have our block shape here. And I'm just going to cut into it. And cut around it on the other side like that. It's a bit extreme that. As I explained that. So let's just soften it a little bit. There we go just like that so we have that coming around there like this and this one I'm gonna keep that nice heavy line down there like that so once you understand now we need to know the shape of this belt okay I'm gonna have it coming around so it's quite this line I'm making here is quite flat I don't like it let's reduce the size of my eraser a little bit um, so I'm gonna just curl it a little bit but I want it to still have that flattish quality to it um, but with you know intelligently okay so now this sleeve is coming around here like this and I'm going to add the bunching of the sleeves there like that and then we're going to put some some arms the fists going to be here like this and this one will be here like this on this side and on the back of his jacket he's now got this thing which you can see clearly as we're turning which is the design that's another thing when you're designing a character you want to really think about the costume uh, and the color scheme and everything that'll really a aid you convey the uh, kind of see he's got a yin yang print with only half of it on the reverse side of his jacket okay because he's not quite the full person yet okay he's a bit of an anti-hero this character he's not a golden boy by any by any stretch of the means he's a he's a hero but he's not a golden boy so i've got all these little visual cues and all these little symbols on on him um actually i love ganada's jacket in akira and um i love that capsule on the back of his jacket um, it's just so cool so I wanted my guy to have a jacket with a symbol on the back but also I wanted it to represent what he stood for now he's certainly not a drug <laughs> not messing around with drugs or anything like that but uh, anyway right so there we go we're continuing with our nice solid look so now we're getting really up close and personal uh, to a rear angle uh, new bitmap layer so not many more left on this one um so let's continue this so now we'll let's have the red 
we want to focus on this shape here again I've got a maybe probably a little bit too much muscle on this construction so I just want to take this and look at this shape here my character is uh, not he's more athletic and lean like Mr. Lee um, probably a little bit more muscle mass than Mr. Lee but not too much um, uh, and he is so I don't want to have him do overly bulky which is what the construction might add there now see we have an Achilles tendon on our feet and on our the backs of our legs which comes down from our calf from our gastric nemus into our heel okay and when we draw our clothes our clothes kind of wrap around our body in a similar way to the way our muscles do so um, it's a little tip for people who want to draw clothes well um, again as I always say study anatomy so this thing now I'm gonna join this line here like that you're gonna see how this is coming around the other side so now this hand again how do we tackle it we do this these shapes so I say triangles and things like that and squares and all those kind of things but we want to we want to have a point to it all so one two three okay we'll get in there and put the details in there later but that's pretty much all there is to it um, my brush is a little fat at the moment so I don't want to go in there doing anything um, too uh, detailed as I said this isn't we're not doing clean up at the moment you uh, one thing that you're learning whether you're an advanced or a beginner from watching me go through this process is this is a very layering process of animation very very layering now we need to see what the back of his jacket is doing so we need to complement the these lines need to complement if I just drew a flat line I'm wasting a lot of opportunity to make some really nice informed drawings here we need to complement the shapes of what his back is actually doing here so we need to do something like this okay I'm just probably gonna quieten down my phone there we go um, again with this thing I'm not gonna focus too much I'm just gonna put this jacket at the back here as a placeholder um, we're not gonna worry too much about whether that's animating right um, we're just focusing on model at the moment uh, colors will be here like this and the back of the head now the back of the head is tempting to rush but I always like to imagine that three-dimensional shape um, because back views are actually a good a good back view in my opinion is you can get a really strong solid drawing out of it there we go that's a nice drawing so we don't want to miss the opportunity you know you have a strong well-defined back yeah this is this was the one that I said I was going to stop it at I think I'll just stop it at this one because we kind of just cycle in here okay and then I'll pick it up I'll pick it up from here when he takes the jump because all of this is just the same thing you know I don't want you to just keep watching me draw the same thing so I'm just gonna do this one more image here um, and then you know the rest of it I think I think we kind of understand uh, what I'm doing um, so we want to move on to something that's another bit more complex to make this lecture um, actually start uh, stop it from becoming a drawing demo okay um, right so I'm gonna come out of here we need to see the camera is getting yeah he's we the camera is getting closer and closer so this is fine him getting this little bit bigger here is fine I might want to keep his volume 
volumes these sizes. Um, so let's just focus on, now you saw how I did this shape here. And now this is where you're going to see some squash and stretch in the back. Um, let's come out here, see some squash and stretch in the back. This leg is coming back on itself. Like this. Okay. We're seeing the underside of his foot here. Like that. And I'm going to put a little shape around that and put a little... I'm going to rough in this stuff and then I'm going to turn off the vector layer so we can have a look. Actually, this was a good drawing to stop it on, actually, because you can really see... You can really start to see the changes that I'm going to start making um, from the construction. Okay, so now I'm going to add this line here. I can't very easily... Now things are starting to change a little bit because we're not moving our camera anymore. So I'm now having to focus on the solidity. See, his arm is going to be smaller there. We won't see that other side there. His knuckles are now changing direction. So we are going to do that and put the thumb on there like that. And I'm not sure if this is coming up on stream. Yes, it is. Okay. So that's his trapezius and that's his head there. So I want to indicate that his head is angling down slightly. So I'm going to put a little bit of a shape like that. You see, it's important. I'm going to put this right now. I'm going to turn this off and we're going to make sense of this. So we've got this, these shapes here. Okay. Now this is how we're going to make our character work. And I'm going to turn off the other one there like that let's turn off the other one there right so we can see that this arm is coming more back on us like this so this shape is going to be coming up and we're going to have some nice pull on that jacket see when you're animating costume you need to think about the texture this is another thing that uh that the rig and puppet tune like we had somebody earlier on today talking you know implying that animating like this was a waste of time because it you know it didn't suit their personal idea of how time should be spent okay but like for me having this kind of little stretches and drawn pulling on the garment those kind of little touches i love that if you love drawing then you know what i'm talking about if you want to you know if you want to bring your characters to life and you love drawing and you love you really care like this hair, the garment stretch into that there. You want to see that in your work. You want to feel that in your animation. Then you know what I'm talking about. That's not going to happen in a in a rig. Never, never, ever. Okay, it'll happen in a CG model, but not in a 2D puppet rig, because it's pure organic stuff. You got to add it in. You got to add that in. So this thing is now curling this way. Similarly, this won't be in a rig where we've got our backward shoulder blade hair is giving us some perspective okay whereas this one's going straight okay so this one's coming out okay so that's another thing that you're not going to get if you're doing puppets and you might not want that which is fine and I respect that but this kind of animation training is for people who want to have these real skills these old skills uh, that are getting lost in today's generation of time-saving tactics um, so there we have we have that going on there we'll probably be seeing a little bit of that there like that so yeah we're getting a nice pull and swing in there we're keeping some solidity in the form this jacket if it's going if he's going up then I'm not as I said I'm not gonna animate too much but that's gonna be coming down on itself a little bit like that okay they're probably coming down. Maybe we'll see a bit of the inner sides of it like that there, like that. Let's give it give it give it some dimension. Okay. So we've got a nice shape like that. We've got an underside of that jacket. Like that there. And we see a little bit more of this shape on the back. There like that. 
this is all uh, pretty much as is. I might actually just put this line here, increase that. That square is a little bit low. So put that line there like that. And have this come here. Now we're going to have some pulling, some more crease on there. We really want to want to exploit the textures, you know, when we're doing stuff like this. Let's talk about this shoe here. Let's get in close and talk about this shoe. I'm glad I picked this drawing to do for you all, because um, it just, you know. There's less of the moving camera, which means we can really focus like this is turning into a pretty much a, a loop. So I'm giving myself, I'm, I'm breaking, see this is essentially just a big shape like this, okay? But by, by adding like this kind of thing in there, I'm breaking it up and I'm going to like add a, a, a ring there to give myself heel and dimension in there like that. You can even do like little things like that. If you want to put in there but I don't that's not in the characters design it's very simple um, so there we go uh, that is particularly that is that that section so let's have a little what I will do is, is I will turn off the other yellows so we can see we can see clearly now the yellow has gone okay so there we go okay so now we can see that now you see when when we okay we're getting solid in form and structure and this is what i've dealt in my inner you know line structure shapes you're not going to have those qualities in your animation or your characters everything is going to be flat like if you're just sliding shapes around and you can see in this section here we can see the working of the scapula the an anatomical working of the the shoulder blades and you can see the shapes okay with these shapes we can keep that in there so it's still gonna be in our this is where we're gonna be doing our leap and our turn into our forward roll and I think 44 minutes in we'll have enough time to get through uh, this if I don't go through all these ones here and we pick it up here on the jump so maybe both these because there's a slight angle change between this one and this one so maybe i'll do maybe i'll pick it up from here and we'll continue on with that right so let's yellow him in and let's put a new bitmap layer um, so again it's the same deal okay uh, this is an upper angle so what i might want to do here to help me out is i'm gonna think about this thing being the square which I have in the construction and we're going to have this more like square like structure on top like this um, and the same deal with the trousers is going to be here with those wrinkles and creases going around and the same thing I mentioned about the clothing around here I might want to do some shape like this to help keep those things it's going to be a pocket he's got that thing along the side of his trousers that mark but we'll worry about those details later actually his belt is going to be here so we want to know about the head okay the head is important the arms are going to be here like this we're going to see a triangle um, and a sort of like square like this that's enough what I'm gonna do for the hands um, at the moment and I'm gonna take away the yellow and we're gonna make this drawing a little bit nicer um, feet I'm going to just pretty much go with what I've got just like that right now here we're going, we've got the top of his head, okay, the occipital section, the temporal section, okay, the patrial section, and the pateral section, sorry, and zygomatic bone, like that. Now let's, I'm going to just rough in that scapula just for my own benefit there. Now I'm, what I'm going to do is he's a bit top heavy, 
looking at that construction so I'm going to alter it but not too much because he should be a little bit dot heavy as well because of the angle but I'm just going to alter it and bring it onto model a little bit so I'm going to take my um, eraser let's make it big again treat it like a putty eraser this is why I love this program it's exactly like working on paper uh, you can keep your harmony you know um, it's no way near as intuitive as storyboard pro if you want to do traditional I just find this is so much more I've actually got a harmony somebody very kindly donated me a copy called person called draconian rain if you're watching thank you very much and um, I've had a play with it and I'm sure it's absolutely fantastic for um, rigged and puppet animation but for hand-drawn 2d animation it is nowhere near as intuitive as storyboard pro storyboard pro is just like working with sheets of paper um, it literally this is of all the programs I've used this is the most this is the closest thing I've ever come to I you can't really do digital painting for finished like print ready things so it's not as good as Photoshop for for digital painting but for line and animation drawing um, this is the closest thing I've come to for paper um, it's just yeah um, it's just fantastic people say why don't you try TV paint I've no need to this is just like paper right so this thing is going this way um, now I'm going to what I am going to do is as I'm bringing the character on model over my construction I'm going to put the thigh model here like this and I can see that my new construction is a little bit too high so I am going to bring him back into where he should be so if we look at the yellow yeah that's still sitting in the right place but we have lost the top heavy bulk um, around there like that so some of these drawings although they looked kind of good in the in the rough they they still will need work to put your character onto model without a doubt you know um, they still will need a little work put his feet together there like that now the top of his head will be we'll have more volume there we'll see the top side I always do the back of the ear like that gives you an idea okay now he's got a parting in his hair hair so we'll have this hair like this we'll see this side of his hair like this and the top side of it like that there we go so that is our above angle of him um, going into that angle before going off to do the jump so we have solved that one these are important drawings to do um, because we're changing angle okay this is all pretty much the same angle but now we're changing angle okay we're going from this angle you look at the angle it's a low angle so let's bring that background on it's difficult to tell but we've got like you know a kind of lower angle like this um, but now on this one we bring the background on we're like well up there okay so now our angle is top down okay so that's a dramatic change so that's why um, we need to be selective on the drawings that we want to work on now from here on now I've worked this drawing out it's gonna be pretty easy so um, let's turn this into a yellow and put a new bitmap layer on top and start um, doing the same thing okay so we have our he's reaching up so I'm going to put in our shape there like that now I've got the better reference to work with um, I'm gonna be pretty 
it's going to be pretty much easier for me to do this. So this is going to be here. Now I'm going to turn on my background. It's important. Yes, we need to have that change. We need to have that. The feet need to be as I've roughed them in. Sometimes you want to change things, but the feet need pretty much to be there. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to move my bitmap layer down where the feet should be because we don't want to fiddle about with that. Even though this is rough, that's where we want those feet to be. It's very important. So now this this is where our scapula and our shoulder blades are reaching up. So this gives some relief on his jacket. Okay, so this thing is going to be making this kind of shape like this. And if you study your anatomy and you work on the scapular belt and you understood all that, which is what we did in real animator training, um, you would then you would know exactly what I'm talking about. The guy in the inner circle who's really just he stopped all his animation training and everything. I said, you don't need to stop. but He's so determined to get his anatomy right. And it's a great joy because I see him posting some drawings now. And like some of them are really showing his understanding of things like the scapular belt and uh, those kind of things in there. And when you when you have a drawing, that's when you when you put your drawing forward to an animation studio, you got to know what you're putting. You, you got to know what you're applying for. Um, the animation studio, the looking at you, if they're particularly for traditional animation, okay, or storyboard or something that is um, more character based. They're not going to be so impressed by your digital painting skills, okay? Um, this isn't deviant art or Instagram or a community where people are going to go, "Wow, look at the shading, look at the light, and all the digital painting skills." They might look at the digital painting and think, um, "Yeah, this guy's got pretty good skills. He he, he pretty much knows how to do." he knows how to do digital painting but they're not going to say they they're not going to go let's hire this person because they want to see in your drawings how informed are your drawings how informed are your is your anatomy see now this drawing i'm going to be doing here is probably a little bit messier because i am want to put more information in there i'll tidy it up later so i'm going to heavy this stuff in okay so I want to be able to see this. Uh, we want to see the the folds in the garment echoing the way that the anatomy is going to be working. Okay, you look at any great animation drawing. Th that's why you know I personally love them um, way more than uh, this detailed comic book drawing with lots of shading and things like that. Is because they're no they're no more they're no less you know they've got exactly the same kind of information in them but they're not fiddly they're streamlined okay um so you so you can just see those things you know instantly and that's what animation drawing is because when we're going to be watching the um the character move we're only seeing this drawing for 124th or one twelfth of a second so we need to see this we need to see these things instantly okay if we don't then we're missing that opportunity to inform the audience of the anatomy and the structure and everything like that so now as he's going to jump off the building so what actually happens here is the camera pulls away from him um, but then as he jumps, the camera gets tighter into him again and follows him to this edit sheet point. So that's almost like an edit, like a wipe really, where we just turn. But it's just a seamless shot where we get to change angles like that. So these two drawings here, probably some of the hardest drawings in the whole sequence. Because they were conveying that angle. Now we're going to be... Now we're not now we've got his legs and everything opening up to us and all those things um, to help us inform 
ourselves. So he's taking off from the building there. And then we have this one here. And I said these these are all working pretty nicely actually from in terms of arcing and straight ahead from a straight ahead way. So um, it's actually quite fortunate um, that this, you know, I block this out. And normally I would pick which ones I want to be my keys, but they're all the ones that I've got here are all pretty solid. Um, it isn't always like that. Right, so we've still got a slight up angle on here, so I have to bear that in mind as I'm making this. So I'm going to be moving this here like this. I'm going to be making this kind of shape so I can remember that thing in there like that. Um, I'm going to be making this kind of shape. What I am going to do, and this is the annoying thing because it won't let me color select on bitmap, so I'm going to move that down. The proportions are a bit off. Right. Now we're going to be going back to what we know, but the line of the creases on those trousers are going to help the angle now. Okay. So now all of this is going to got to help the angle. Let me put on my light box. So I want to see what those feet are doing. Okay. That's enough. I don't need any more. And this one is going to be coming under here. So we want this to help the angle here like this. We're not really going to be seeing much of the underside of his foot from this angle. So I'm just going to put a shape like that. Let's put a shape like that and another shape on the front of it like that. That's better. That's more like what it will be seen, like that. There we go. That works. Right. So now his deltoids will be at the top. Okay. His straps will be here like this. And we'll see this section of his skull. Notice how I'm, I'm drawing it all like almost a skull and just fitting on the head on the front of it like that. That's really giving us that feel. Now we want the upper delt, this arm upper delt. See, I'm putting in more anatomy in there. Even though I'm simplifying this thing, it's very important to think always anatomy. But always I want to see how I'm now I'm bringing this, this line to really get the posing working nicely. But I want to think about the angle of the jacket Okay, so we want to think about the shape these things are making. Now the hand is going to be coming up, so we're just going to make that little square. One, two, three, four, like that. Like that. And one in there. I should say one, two, three, shouldn't I? Let's just put one in there. And same deal. Like that. What I'm going to do is turn that off so we can look at it as is. Now this thing angle, this thing is going to be like this. Let's just put this in the ear angle. Ear will be here like this. There. So we are now going to be putting this part of the jacket, connecting that, but we want, remember how I said we want to show that scapula action. So here the lines were like that. We want to still kind of see them unfolding. Okay. Almost like wings opening out. The jacket. I'm going to bring it around a little bit. Oh, starting to open up. We're not animating that jacket at the moment. Okay. It's important to emphasize that. It's a placeholder pose. Everything like that, follow through, overlapping action, and all those things, um, they get done later on. Okay. I'm not going to do any much more with this. Um, taking it any further will be just noodling it. Okay. It still needs to be cleaned up, and all those stuffs happening to it. 
Okay, now we're getting closer to this thing. How are we doing for time? One hour in. Okay. So let us just speed through this now, right? New bitmap layer. That was the challenging part. Now we can speed through this very quickly, right? So this pretty much follows the shape. Notice the spine of the back hair like this. Okay, I'm going to be thinking about the angle of that leg as it's falling forward like that. Let's just think about that shape. I'm going to curl this, okay? This thing I'm going to put here to represent that part of the the butt. Okay, it's going to be moving like that. Okay, let's just do that there to show you. That's how that works. Okay, that's going to be coming somewhat like this. Uh, let's look at the background. Yeah, he's off there. He's off the building. Okay, sometimes it's worth looking at the background. Um, uh, what am I doing? That should be like this. Shoe shape should be like this. Yeah, that'll do. Um, the arms, upper delts, upper delts. That's going to link. Okay, let's just... Scapula will link those two like that. Let's just have that move on there like this there like this right and let's open that out like that and the arms just gonna put a square in there we can put like a diamond there let's just go one like that one two and then one like that there that's enough for that for now we can go in there and make them look more or less shape like later okay that's all we want to do for now um, head we want to depict look this is important the head is changing its angle we want to see that we don't just want to slide the head around okay this is how we want to be good at this stuff the head the, that thing at the top is going to be there like this okay this thing is going to be here like that we really want to see that changing angle in that head. Very important. I'm going to turn that off now so we can see what's going on there. Let's just take away some of the anatomy of this thing and put it more to model hair like that. The collar will be coming around like that. Um, this thing will be coming over it. Okay. And this jacket will be really starting to open up now, like that. Even though, as I said, it's a placeholder, okay? So that'll be really starting to open up, like that. The waist, see how I'm putting this line on the waist to help the anatomy? Very important you do that. You don't do that, you're missing an opportunity that's some really solid strong drawing in your work mm -hmm -hmm. hair this thing is gonna be hair like this there there we go that's our jump see the dimension we're getting on that let's put that in with the background dimension we're getting in on that suddenly how that's all coming together um, it's going to look weird when I scrub along and we see that big chunk of black there black but um, you see um, what we have learned at the moment is we've seen how we've used the shape to do the rotation there now now you're seeing this action take place I think what I might do with this being an hour and six in I might just take us to this point here and we'll pick it up on the next lecture and I promise I won't do this without you seeing it I'll do this for you seeing it I don't want these lectures to go on too long this is part of real animator training and when people watch lectures you need to be focused you need to be concentrated on what's going on um, there is a danger of this particular part of the lecture becoming a drawing demo which is why I've chosen to just do certain sections I believe it's important that you see this is very easy but I believe it's important I just I'll just take it to this um, I'll just take it to this and um, 
it's just important that you see this and um, and then we'll pick this up on another one um, so let me just um, yellow in all of these you can see the bigger we get the easier it becomes um, right we'll just take it here we'll take it up to this point here right so we're flattening out our angle anyway um, so we're losing dimension but notice if you saw in the uh, the underdrawing here we we've got this nice shape of the spine this is something that you really need as I was saying um, new bitmap layer if you're really serious about being good um, all these uh, anatomical things are just so like this gluteus like these shapes here it's gonna so much help help with your dimension okay even if we're doing simple things with a guy like this guy is obviously wearing some kind of jean type material okay but we even though like I'm gonna straighten the band of his waist I know that that's in there and I, I'm gonna somehow I'm gonna put that in my drawing okay whether I'm gonna do it like this or whether I'm gonna do it like you know and then put a straight line underneath it I'm gonna put that in my drawing and I'm gonna have the angle of this hair like this or the okay it's very very important okay this things are gonna come here what I'm gonna do is I'm going to put some line there like that maybe that line is a bit too extreme we want to crease but just a bit there like that we want to put this now this proportion of this leg is a little bit off so this thing is going to come probably like this that's his trouser leg there this one what's the thing of that leg okay so this shape see look at the harmony between this and this okay these two creases on the leg look at that okay that's things like that are very very important to get into your posing um, so the more you know th these draw this we're still you know a lot of this is people say f you got to get good at drawing if you want to be Anna. yes you do but you can't it's not an either or situation you don't just say first I'll learn drawing and then I'll learn animation it doesn't work like that the animation side of it is just as time consuming just as tricky just as complicated because if you want to learn the simple animation of the cutout things then yeah that's 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 super easy but if you want to learn to manipulate your shapes that are based on the kind of drawings that you like doing then it ain't super easy okay you're not free transforming things you're not sliding things you're not pulling things about you have to be a master of line and shape manipulation you have to train yourself to be able to do this stuff let's look at this jacket okay the jacket I'm gonna put as a little sort of oh shut up it's got to be the bitmap player I'm gonna put as a little sort of like wave there even though I said I'm not animating that jacket I'm gonna put that in there because it's just to tell me and remind me that that's how that's going to have that flapping effect as he's falling like that okay just like that so we can see that it's coming into play foot hair if Gina is still online ask me about foot see this square in here okay I'm gonna divide it into a third and on this section I'm gonna cut in in like this okay let's rub that down a bit there's a bit of a heavy line I'm gonna cut in like this and I'm gonna come around like that and we're gonna curl that like that see how easy that is but it's only easy if you study the real thing and you know how to go around this thing maybe as now I'm drawing his foot I'm putting the relief of those pants a bit too tight 
a bit too loose around it. It should be something more like this. Okay. And this one will probably see a shape like this. Okay. So I'm not going to focus. I'm not still, still, this is still, you know, almost died down. Not quite, you know. So now this shape here like this gives us our first finger then we can build our other ones off it like that okay similarly this side just like this we'll put a little rotation on this side see we're still being quite rough um, but we're getting form and volume in this thing now that head angle, as that body and spine is is um, is coming more, we're seeing the patrial part, okay? So we're seeing more the top side. Patrial part, patrial. I always have problems saying that word, you know. Um, then you have your pat patroid gland or something. So, you know, where the ear is and all that. So, always throws me. That's one of the downsides of learning from books. You never know how to pronounce <laughs> the words, you know. But I could go on YouTube. But there's so many science uh, doctor videos about certain body parts. If I really wanted to know the pronunciation, like I remember, I used to call it greater trochanter, and my brother is a doctor. He says greater trochanter, you idiot. Okay, okay. <laughs> It's like, so there it goes like this, right? So now we're going to go in super big, okay? So we got one, two, three, four, four drawings left to make. Five. One, two, three, four, five. So now we've done, we've done the most challenging aspects of it. Let's give it a little scrub, even though you'll see a big chunk of uh, it in the black like that. So we can see already we're getting super professional now with super tight drawings they're not super tight but i mean super solid you know solid drawings which is what one of the principles of 12 principles of animation is um, know your character's construction and understand how it works from every angle so now we're going to go in here new bitmap layer and we're gonna go we're not gonna do any copying and pasting okay um, that's not that's not what we want to do okay so we're gonna go here and this belt I'm gonna make a shape like this remember I said it's important to get those things you got to get the ratio of your characters proportions right as well when you're doing this kind of stuff um, so I'm gonna put these lines here to help me with dimension that'll help me get these sections right now I want to get this more of this 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 uh, spine of the scapula okay actually it'll be out like this okay so we want to get that with our wide lats we want to get that but we're quite flat on here probably will be more this shape let's hook that round to the other side okay probably will be more this shape and I'm not gonna now I'm not gonna you can like I can rough in the hands to give me an idea but I'm not gonna worry too much similarly I'm not gonna worry here I know um, I always say draw beyond the frame but we're we're getting super tight to cheat it now so it's okay we can draw a little bit beyond but not too much um, no I use the vector layer the bitmap layer right so this thing head is a little bit small so now we're we're go we're changing from that upper angle we're moving back to the back the occipital section of the of the head okay so the rear section of the ear is coming here like this. Now I'm going to turn that off because that's distracting me. 
so now we can see that we've got nice shapes consistent shapes I'm gonna keep that flapping jacket flapping flipping flipping heck okay jacket on that side there like that hmm. this collar is gonna be here right now I don't even need to flip and roll I've got my proportions right I can just draw my characters model over this now um, this thing is going to come up here like this where the back I will flip for this actually the back see how the shape of the scapula helps all this just like that we're gonna have those shapes around there like that and they're like that this part of the jacket we're gonna open out see the underside like this so, so even though this is still kind of rough line it's solid enough it really will be a case of just defining and tracing over the the lines a little bit and eliminating some of the roughs on tightening this up it's just pretty tied down what we're doing here um, this thing gonna add this line here like this and we're gonna add that there like that let's then put in our we can make a head just one head here to give us an idea of the proportioning it's nothing nothing drastic that's good enough that is all we need before we start getting super close okay okay so now we can even see with that jacket even for fun there we're not really thinking about it it's we're getting some nice movement in there so now we're gonna arc this guy back okay um, this is where you animating a turnaround of characters also really helps let's put in a new bitmap layer um, so we want to we want to thin this down actually so we want to think about the side I'm gonna have to draw this change this up a little bit okay so we want to think about this side section that's where the rear section is spine is here like this this is the thoracic cage this will be the legs here like this this will be the upper delts so we are off there this will be the upper delts let's turn that off that's distracting now that's better that's better right so let's just rub that down a bit Kapati eraser and start making sense of it so this is his door so let's put the let's fatten that brush up now we're getting bigger let's take the flow down and torso section will be here like this this so we're gonna put some creases on these trousers here like that it's a pocket define his pocket this side he's actually got that side bit on his trousers we can put creases up here or whatever um, this is all for later stuff not so important right now um, this is where his jacket is going to be with his sleeve coming around we got we go out of, we want to feel the pull on that very important and the upper section of this it's going to be like this and this is going to be this way like that around there like that how are we doing for time one hour 20 minutes we're almost done not bad not bad and now this jacket is gonna be curling around this way so if that's that way then I'm gonna want to have maybe just something like this so probably I'm just putting this in as a placeholder I don't want to 
I don't want to kill myself with that so I'm putting that in as a placeholder and let's put that in around there like that there that's a nicer shape that's a nicer shape you put that in down there like that so we're going to put a line here I'm going to put a line here I'm going to scroll that around there like that that's going to be the inside of the jacket just there like that probably it won't curl so much it'll be straighter like that so there we go so I'm going beyond we won't even see the arm but going beyond just helps me it helps me keep proportion okay I said all that matters is what's in here but going beyond helps me keep proportion and this drawing looks solid enough to me a uh, new bitmap layer let's get a fatter brush now with less flow and draw the f draw a lot faster let's go even bigger then okay uh, let's kill the flow so this thing will be like this the waist we want that waist to be kind of flat there like that um, this is pretty solid the side of the body here the pectoralis is there the upper delt is there that would probably be more like this perspective wise and collar would be here the jacket the jacket would be coming around the back there like that okay let's turn that off that's okay let's bring that down now that's that one that that one's done fairly quick that was a strong rough okay so let's bring that down bring that in like that this is a little bit of relief on its abs there this thing would be here this is the angle of the sleeve of the jacket be like this be something like this yep that's going like that yeah that's working yeah so we're getting that right just two more to go two more to go um right i'm probably gonna want my fat brush again i like working with that bigger brush um how's this one probably let's have it a little bit bigger okay so let's focus on the dorsal construction shape yeah this big brush is so much nicer for when i want to do a bigger drawing let's have this this is where this waist section is going to be what's his legs doing there okay so i'm going to shut up i really hate the way storyboard pro does that don't default to the layer okay it's not helpful right so that goes like that that goes like that the upper delts are going to be around here see how important anatomy is even when we're doing cartoon it is vital okay that's the lats gonna come here the neck I'm gonna rough in a head here this what I've got is way wrong in this rough I'm gonna rough in a head here and I'm gonna turn that off because that's distracting me right so now I'm gonna start thinking about the head angle here okay I'm not gonna I'm not gonna focus too much on the head even though it's not in this shot but if I start on the head I'm going to lose all sense of proportion but I'm just going to use this angle here which is going to help me um, with what I want see the sternocleidomastoid the laryngeal prominence the trapezius all of this stuff people say have you got any cheats and tricks on how to draw heads not really I, c I can give you little tips but it won't look as good as what I'm doing here because the best the best shortcut to drawing your head from a good angle is to understand heads and to um, get your anatomy um, correct <laughs> you know, 
and then you can just make a few lines like what I've done there and boom your head angle is good you know it really is as simple as that probably we want that there to proportion that's much better much better so we'll have the waist lower like that and this thing will be curling around how are we doing for time 127 okay this thing will be curling around like this the jacket will have this upper section that links in but it'll open out at the back so we'll have something like this curling round at the back and it'll be on this side here like that there like this right so now I'm going to go in and start putting in a little bit of detail but before I do that let's just knock it back very slightly just one more drawing left to do after this and we are done right head okay now we have our eye and our other eye this is the first time we're dealing with the head we have our these represent our orbicularis oris okay this is our nasal okay our nose so that's going to come in in a shape like this now we have this which comes within the zygomatic frame of the mouth okay I'm gonna keep his mouth closed um, the mandible comes here okay now we have the zygomatic bone and the chin relief the ear will come around here like this okay the um, temporal section okay this is the brow come around here like this I remember this character like it was yesterday okay so this goes around here like that right so I'm going to give his upper eye and his lower eye upper eye and lower eye let's have big fat eyelids and his nose was straight like that with a nostril let's bring the brush size down a little bit he had a big bottom lip and his chin was like this and he had nice sideburns <laughs> Bruce Lee sideburns he had a big chunk hair and this is we split that like that and when it was from an up angle we put like two things around like that bring it there like this okay so that gives us that angle there now we have these lines here like this and what has happened using my Cintiq which is why I said I didn't want to use the head from the start is actually no no you know what no yeah yeah let's bring it down a bit so I'm gonna get my cutter tool one of the things that I still cannot do as well digitally as what I do traditionally is keep my proportions because I'm always zooming in and out of the Cintiq um, and I guess that is one of the benefits of maybe having a bigger one but I don't know I've just developed a habit where I like to go in and go super close to my drawing um, perhaps when I don't need to I just like the fact that I can go super close and it doesn't always it isn't always necessary because I've always been obsessed with line always and when you're working on paper um, 
you can only take your line so far when you you know um, you can't like go super super close to it um, you know so like I'm actually speeding up a lot by drawing with this particular brush um, but inside I'm going oh that line isn't crisp and not crisp like vector I don't like vector crisp um, he's got a yin yang belt there with all that kind of we'll do that all that stuff later then it's got all this hair that'll be the front section of his trouser belt there like that pocket there this section here like that there we go so that's actually what's going on here is he'll have this here and he's got that section of his jacket which make that a little bit more interesting with this portion coming here like that so there we go that is that particular section not bad almost one and a half hours almost one and a half hours we've got one more drawing to do and we are done probably done for this lecture it's getting a little bit long in the tooth uh, but I think ending with this section here is very useful because you get to see the construction of the character so here we go you can see we are a lot tighter there um, but now we're really starting it's really looking pretty cool actually I have to say um, that's one of the things I love about being an animator a hand-drawn animator the pleasure never goes away when you're doing your work and you know when and you're seeing it coming to life and you know it's looking great um it's one of the best feelings in the world that's what i have to say it really is right so um let's add a new bitmap layer on there like that right i'm coming out of there let's use the fat brush again let's save time okay so I'm focusing on this line of the character here um, and this is the thing that we need to focus on we talked about this when roughing it out we talked about watching the negative space and the shapes and the shot composition all start to come together and make sense um, and this is really really getting graphic just the way I like it so this all represents the scapula you know so this is deltoid and the shoulder blade the scapula the latissimus dorsi goes under there the then we got the serratus anterior and the chest okay the chest pectoralis so I'm gonna put this center line all in here this character has got he's a bit like me okay He's got abs that show through his clothes. That's another satisfying thing. Although I won't have them much longer if I continue, if I keep skipping my workouts. I've just been so busy on A and B. Um, right, so this thing goes here like that. And our head is just a little bit on the small side. So we want to have this thing going here like that and we're going to have the neck section come and I'm going to turn that off because that's putting me off there we go doesn't it yeah we can start seeing that's coming together there I'm glad I turned off that head because that rough head was putting me off we don't want that there we want that somewhat Here instead the ear will be there the laryngeal prominence will be there yeah that's better that's where we want that I think I will leave the head till last actually um, so let's put in the collar his inner collar then his um, sleeves of his jacket now we'll concentrate more on the model okay because it's off off screen I didn't really pay much heed to it but on screen it's important right so this is going to be here like that then we've got this collar outer collar inner collar outer collar okay interesting things and we got this section that joins the jacket 
but it's separated because it's open. Now notice how as his scapula is coming forward, we're going to have bunching together on his jacket. Okay, up here in that area like that. Again, that's not going to be in your puppet animations. Okay, it just it's another thing that comes purely exclusive to hand-drawn animation. Okay, this jacket. I'm going to keep the shape of this jacket out here like this. Okay, it's a placeholder. It may be good enough f for what we want, um, but it's going to do there. It's, it'll it'll do there for the time being. Let's have a little bit of the back of that jacket like that. We have the waist. This one like this. Okay. This thing is probably going to be here. Probably this need to be a little bit higher actually. Using the construction. Never stick to anything religiously. Okay. Even if it seems nice in the construction. Okay. I have something like this. Have that there like that. Now let's just go in and do the face. Same deal. See, I'm not going to even, I'm not really going to work even probably flipping and rolling this thing because I know the construction. I know that that's going to go in there like that. Okay, and I know that this is going to go like this. with this chunk of his head hair like this this is going to go here he's got his arm coming forward here this arm is here like this let's bring our brush down as we just focus on a little bit of facial detail doing that thing that i said i like to do getting in there tight Okay, with that particular angle, like this, you know, like that, there, right. And what's happened as usual, <laughs> zooming in, his face is a little bit big. Okay, so I'm going to bring that down. So let's do that there, and... Then we're going to come down with the head in that angle there, which we will pick it up on the next episode, um, on the next lecture. So let's just have a quick little run through and see what we've got. Okay, so you see how we're now solid on that. We're a lot more solid as we're falling through on that. Let's get in tight. Let's see what it would look like. Um, more accurately there like that and then we have of course this section here coming around um, so this thing I'll, coming into here I'll probably do off stream um, and this one we'll do on the next lecture because I think you probably do want to see how to tackle this complex character move um, as well so we'll probably need to do a part another part on this character so this is how we're starting to bring some solidity into our character animation and get it to a professional level. Um, okay, so uh, this has been uh, lecture number five of dynamic perspective animation in the AMB animation real animator training uh, library. Uh, if you are enjoying this series and you are feeling that it is something that will benefit you in your animation training and you are just tired of following advice that has led you in circle. Right, right. There we go. Hopefully you guys enjoyed. Um, oopsie. Uh, where are we? Did I press something odd there? Let's go to live streaming. Am I still live? Yes, I am still live. Right, there we go. Right, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. Um, 
that was my free real animator training stream and um, that was done ages ago actually well before we even completed the basics archive of the real animator training library what was I doing while you were doing that I was working on this uh, peacock tail um, let's just extend this cycle a bit uh, let's control C uh, control V and control V this is not done yet I need to uh, do some more stuff for it but this will be the next uh, intermediate lecture to cap off our intermediate well I might add more videos to there but we're going to be talking about complexity via the science of shape simplification because we were doing a lot of um, exercises on uh, hang on I'll just have a look at the chat while I've got this on we, uh, we were doing a lot of exercises with basic uh, stick figures and things like that and obviously as you completed as you go through and you complete the intermediate archive you go on to uh, you're going to want to start doing go beyond stick figures so we're going to do a cycle which will be uh, looking like it's a very very complicated thing but showing you via my uh, system of uh, the science of shape simplification uh, we will be doing this now this is uh, granted you've just seen lecture number five of my advanced dynamic perspective thing that was done in my advanced archive so there's a lot of stuff in there that probably went over a lot of people's heads um, it's one of those the advanced archive is different to the intermediate and basics archive uh, because you can't really follow along in those videos they are just tutorial videos once you reach the advanced level in real animator training if we see the library here uh, you won't be following along because you're, you'll be pretty much real animator material after going through the basics and the intermediate so everything said in those lectures will be just um, for you to just watch and understand um, as as you know perhaps not uh, a equal standard but uh, you know a professional you know a professional in the making thank you live fantasy um, I was inspired by one of the guys uh, member uh, one of the members in the growth progress and development group post and I said uh, I'm gonna do a really good thing there so very quickly um, the real animator training library if you want to join just go to ambanimation.com and you know you can enter the real animator training library from from here if you're a member or you can choose to upgrade your membership tier but if you liked that video and you'd like to have hundreds and well 200 plus but how many videos are in there let's go in the library um there you go uh 247 uh and counting videos more then just go and uh click on join amb real animator training and um you know you got a lot of information here um no doubt you'll know what you're in for watching that but you've got three membership tiers now um gonna answer a couple of questions before i go that i get regarding these because i get a lot of emails from people who who want to upgrade and who can't afford the full membership um so basically uh you can just join the basics okay which is where you learn the absolute fundamentals and that is a follow along step by step course um, and then the next year you can have your animation basics with the anatomy for the animator archive um, and the third tier on option is the full training library where you get all the training archives basics intermediate anatomy for the animator and the advanced archive that you guys have just seen but it is advisable sometimes i advise people even if they've got all the money to join the full thing look if you want to do this properly you need to follow those basics and intermediate courses um if you skip to the you want to do dynamic perspective blah 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 it's you're probably not going to get the most out of it you got to follow along and get to that level to make use of that um so and then they say well okay um do you have payment plans well we got better than payment plans actually because payment plans force you to pay every month i don't do that you have an entire year okay so say you just have enough to join the basics you can join the basics and if if, if you think well that's it for me 
fine, that's it. But if you'd like more, you've got an old year to, to, to make just the payment difference. Say if you just want to upgrade to the basics with anatomy, you've got an entire year to make that little difference for the, between those two. Um, uh, and if you want the full thing, you know, you've got an entire year to, to, to upgrade from the basics uh, onto the real animator training full library. So much better than a payment plan, much more flexible, much more uh, depending on how you feel you're getting on with the training. Is it something you want to continue investing your time in? It is a, it, it, this is real animator training. It's something that you're going to have to invest a lot of time in. Uh, it takes a lot of time to be a great animator. Um, so it's going to take a lot of time for you to train to be one if you want to be uh, a great um, animator, uh, hand-drawn 2D animator. That is that is what I do. That is the speciality. So that is the AMB Animation Real Animator Training Library. I will say that all of these tiers, okay, are the same. You know, if you're serious about uh, learning animation, you cannot get a better deal than this. Um, for the same price, you could get a PlayStation with a few games and controllers. And from you know, you probably spent more on your PlayStation if you include the TV, um, you know, and all the other uh, things you spent on it over the time. So anybody who says that uh, this is too expensive for them, you know, there are CalArt students who've paid well in excess of 180 grand. Uh, for their uh, degrees that still come to learn from me. There are post-production studios in London who have, uh, which have instructors uh, who are not, none other than the son of the great Richard Williams, Alex Williams, who uh, heads the animation of those places, uh, yet they still come and join Real Animator Training. So if you are one of those who think um, that perhaps this is out of your price range, that's fine. That's okay. Just, but uh, perhaps animation isn't your thing. Because if going on a holiday and having fun, which costs way more than joining the training library, is more important to you and well worth the price, then uh, sorry to say this. This this is a place for real animators. Okay, <laughs> so you got to know what you're getting here. Okay, so that's it. Uh, I'm not going to go on too much about that. Uh, you've just watched a free. Uh, lecture that's going to stay on YouTube um, for however long. Just visit ambanimation.com. The link should be in the description. Right, so I'm looking forward to... Um, obviously, I'm working on a movie at the moment, but as I've got a little bit of downtime, I'm, I'm trying to trying to maximize my output here. So um, I want not able to stream a fresh stream because I'm prepping my stream of lectures that I want to do on this so I thought well I haven't been on YouTube for a while why not give you guys a free stream an old classic from the advanced archive um, part five of my 10 part lecture on dynamic perspective and while that's streaming ahead I'll go on and do this this looks finished to you but now it's got to be on ones and um, I've got to soften certain things and uh, yeah I've got to clean it up and color it because as real animator training is advancing um, you know, I'm sure you've noticed some of you who have been members from the start or watch this thing as it's going along. Uh, the quality of my lectures just keeps getting they, they were great from the start, you know, but the quality just keeps getting better and better and better. So um, so I'm going that extra mile with these. I'm cleaning up my things and coloring them just to show you what they would look like when they're finished rather than just leaving them in rough, which is good enough. But, you know, hey, that's AMB, Real Animated Training for you. Okay, then. Um, I'm going to go now. Hey, Life Fantasy, just very quickly, I saw your um, your test in the Growth Development and Progress group. Looking good. There are a few things that I think uh, you missed in the, in the volume-wise of that. Um, I've got to have those. <laughs> well, yeah, you're right about that, Life Fantasy. But there are a few um, volume issues that I think you missed. I'm going to have to go and stream in that group um, when I find some time. Obviously, balancing a movie, balancing real animator training, uh, lectures, and obviously trying to keep all my social media happy at this particular stage is, is challenging. But, you know, I'm going to keep on doing it. 
um, it's it's great so I will come into that group at some point and uh, and enlighten a few uh, members who are posting some of their tests but uh, nothing to worry about too much um, life fantasy um, it is you you are you know I've said it before you're you're really you you you're in my opinion you are pro material by today's standards you are pro 2d material by today's standards um, you know um, I would say you know you still got a lot to, uh, a lot to work on um, particularly I'd like to point out some stuff to you about that Simba run that you did um, it was great and all that but there were just certain things where you know we didn't feel the belly relating to the shoulder blades and you know the the anatomy of the the rear legs and all that it, it kind of you had all those things but the anatomy wasn't joined if you kind of know what i'm saying so maybe when you go on to the quadruped i know that you refer to some other quadruped lectures which are great and all that but maybe when you go on to the intermediate quadruped lectures in the intermediate archive uh and you start understanding the link between the shoulder blade and the latissimus muscles at the back and the um, the uh, pelvis and all that um, maybe you can start adding some of that stuff into your really nicely drawn character cycles obviously it's difficult to 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 point those things out to you without looking at it online and showing you um, I I I it sounds silly well can I do it no I'll, I'll tell you what I'll save it for the group I'll save it for the group okay then so that is that I'm going to now come offline and um, yeah thank you very much for joining me I'm gonna leave this lecture up for free on YouTube uh, for everyone to enjoy see you later people bye bye